Hello, David. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Oh, my Wi-Fi connection was, was out for the last five minutes, ten minutes. I was just oh, like, bad luck. Very bad luck. Don't worry. Um, so, fun. yes, this morning we've got David's lecture. Um, David is, of course, some of you will know already, uh, teaching one of the studio units on Thursdays on the course and has previously taught on Tuesdays as well. Um, and this morning he's going to be presenting some of his PhD research, um, but I'll allow him to uh, maybe introduce himself, give a little bit of background, professional background um, as well whilst you're loading your slides. Over to you, David. Hi. Um, yeah, give me just a sec. I'm uh, just trying to get my computer set up properly here. Um, Almost there. Um, hang on just a sec. I don't think I've got the right slides here. Yeah, as Susie, as, or as Lucy um, described, I, I'm teaching Studio A, um, and last year I taught dissertations, and then this is my third year, and so the first year I also taught Studio A. Um, I'm also a PhD student um, at the University of Manchester, um, where I started in 2017. Um, I'm trained as an architect. Um, I was tr um, I'm from Oklahoma originally, kind of in the middle of the U.S. I went to Oklahoma State University and then um, practiced primarily in the Pacific Northwest, a uh, little bit in Portland briefly, and then in Seattle, Washington. And I was there for several years. Um, worked on a, um, a big project in Memphis, Tennessee, and I was on site there for a couple of years. And then that led to an experience in uh, Seoul, Korea, um, where I was there for about a year and a half. And um, and then traveling to a few other places and then back to Oklahoma to work for a bit and, and then ended up in London. And I was in London for 10 years, almost 10 years and, and worked for two practices then and then um, started the Ph.D. here in Manchester. Um, so that's basically kind of my my overall biography. Um, I had asked, I sent around a kind of preparation request and um, about introductions. And so I thought I would perhaps, and a few of you have done that, and I, I really appreciate that. So what I'm going to do is actually share screen to show that. Um, where, where is it? Hang on just a sec, I don't see it. I'm having trouble with 
bear with me here. Just okay. There we go. Okay. Does everybody see that? Yeah, we can see that. Thanks, David. Yeah, and so these are the these are the um, the objects that uh, everybody has uploaded. Um, a few of these are are, are my, actually my students. That the object there to the the second one um, at the very top to the left. That is. <laughs> Is is this? If you can see, if you can see me on on screen now, um, and it's it's not actually a coat hanger, or I don't use it as a coat hanger. I, I it was up for grabs in the lobby of the of the building, and I grabbed it and thought I might use it and, and install it, but I, I ended up not doing that um, because I I've, I have a few others of these that are I'm already that I already did install, but I'm using it actually. Because I sit next to this, um, right next to where I'm sitting right here, I sit next to this large window. Um, and, and the window actually opens completely, uh, pivots completely, so that it, it opens, opens up. And I use it, I put it right at the hinge of the window, and, and it, it, it kind of prevents the window from closing. And... Um, and so I, I was really quite pleased with that actually because it because it fits exactly and I, um, and it does it so it it holds the window open absolutely as as full as it can possibly do. Um, unfortunately, I'm not using it anymore, um, but it normally it, it sits on my um, window ledge. Occasionally, it's on my table if the window ledge gets full of stuff. But then, since um, I'm not opening the window up anymore because of fall, I've I've now got it hanging um, along my bookshelf over here to the left. And so that's kind of my object. Um, does anybody else, does anybody out there actually want to in introduce, introduce an object for me is, um, that actually submitted one? I'll stop. Hi, David. Hi, Simon. I submitted actually what I'm wearing right now, which are my uh, Sennheiser headphones, which I actually bought during the pandemic when I realized I was spending a lot more time by myself and at the desk. I thought I'd spoil myself. Uh, they're noise cancellation, that's the best thing. So sometimes I don't even listen to music. I just zone out, uh, drown out background sounds or other people in my home. So yeah, I wear them every day. <laughs> you know, it's funny now, I couldn't imagine not having them. So how about maybe one more? Is anyone out here that submitted an, an object, or or does somebody there that didn't submit one does do you do you want to introduce an object? Maybe a, but I think it'd be nice to hear a student actually. Hi, David. Oh, hi, Vicky. Uh, morning. Well, I just will talk about my. So my is the last second line with um, the second one. So there are a bunch of pictures and postcards and also um, the things I carry with kind of folder because I uh, the past 10 years I basically I move around the world and living in different countries and travels a lot yeah the last yeah that one 
so there are a lot of um, also while I was working, um, somehow people develop this habits of sending like postcards, um, even with the people I work with, also the interns that have been working in my office. So they leave me really nice postcard. They draw it on it and they, they leave their message on it. They say thank to me and I let them to learn something or or something just specifically. We've been out together, so these are memory, like really memory, um, nice, um, really nice to me. So uh, also because I move around a lot, and then I kind of develop this habits to carry this folder, like everywhere. Um, not nothing like maybe a lot, a lot of people care sending things, and then after I feel like um, that just too heavy to just move around with a bunch of stuff so i this is kind of like a memory a memory in the small bag you know yeah mm, thanks for that um i'm i'm always actually quite amazed at how um it's actually here uh, okay cool Let's... like um i'm just like picking up some of them, I guess. It's like this is a very nice one, and it got text here for me. <laughs> so they wrote for me, and then um, even with like very long time ago, like they they got like I think it was part in 2000, 2020, uh, to two thousand twelve. Sorry, two thousand twelve. So a very nice one with a view of like one of friends home <laughs> so the, the, these are these are really nice and they're also me like when i w was in japan i went to this amusement park sorry I can't really see it <laughs> maybe i need to turn off this that's Wait. okay we, can, we yeah we can sit in that yeah <laughs> so that's me so we were, sit, uh, we were actually riding this rolling coaster. It was like the fastest in the world. <laughs> so it's like basically, and then um, this is like uh, maximum speed. Like I, I wrote it on it, like 175 um, kilometers per hour. <laughs> this is like really fast. <laughs> and then uh, so that that's a really nice memory. I, I like to carry it around sometimes just to look at it <laughs> when I have three rooms mm. three times yeah mm. yeah thanks thanks for that um does anybody anybody else just want to do one very quickly introduce their object morning <clears throat> good morning uh, <coughs> uh my picture is the first one the hat uh it was when I, uh, it's, it was last year, I was being, uh, I, I was a director and a cameraman of a film uh, in north of China. Uh, it was in a desert and uh, when we, uh, when we doing the job, uh, the desert, uh, it, it was snowy in the desert, so I never see this thing before. Uh, I never see this thing before. So I put my hat on a uh, dead wood, uh, and uh, the hat carries uh, the snow. And I took this picture. So it it was like a memory of the. So where's the hat now? Uh, it's still there. It's still on the ah the tree. Yeah. That's still on the, uh, I see, I see. Thanks, Kai Wen. Um, it'd be nice to be able to, to do a few more of these, but um, they do take time. And I'm always quite amazed at just how, in some ways, when we're talking about an object or a thing, it's almost easier to talk about ourselves and our connections through our objects, as opposed to, doing a general introduction of of who we are and and our experiences um uh and so once we, you know i i do this quite frequently and once 
once you get going and, and people start talking about their things, um, it, it, it takes a lot of time. It becomes very involved very quickly. Um, um, and it's a nice thing, I think. Um, I, the other the other request that I had made, I don't know, um, hopefully some of you have, have read this, is, is George Preck's um, essay, Notes Concerning the Objects That Are on My Work Table. Uh, for me, this is a kind of early touchstone, um, a kind of very simple and direct description of one's practice um, through material objects and, and, and how we use them um, and utilize them. Um, and and so um, at the at very early in the PhD, I, I asked myself, okay, I, I really appreciate this article. I appreciate how it begins to to talk about um, these practices in a very simple way. And so so I wanted to to in a way respond to that and um, and perhaps talk about the objects on my desk. Um, I thought about actually maybe in installing a camera above my desk, you know, that would that maybe photographically I would take every every um, periodically every day or something like that. But then I kind of came to the conclusion that actually, um, you know, I'm on the computer, so really the objects on my on my desk don't really change very very much. Um, so another idea came to me, and that was just like taking a photograph outside of my window. Um, and so, you know, it's like the scene that accompanies me when I sit down to work. Um, this is this is quite recent, this photo. It's the eighth, uh, yesterday at 12.36. Um, so I started taking a photograph every time I sat down to my desk and I would remember to actually take the photo. Um, and so this was also yesterday at 3.33, um, but I have, but, uh, but it, it has become a bit of a habit. And so, you know, I, when I'm not so busy, I, you know, I will take, you know, generally two to three a day. Uh, and then this one was later yesterday at, uh, 5.36 or 5.38. And so I started this very early on in June of 2017, and then these are the first initial initial ones. You can see that um, the tree uh, with leaves that begins to slowly go away, and you can always kind of see seasonally, you know, the the darker ones begin to begin to appear uh, when the when the hours get lower in the um, in the day during the fall and winter. Um, and then, and I, I've set up an Instagram account and, uh, and so now I kind of upload them and it, it's, it's as though you can kind of almost um, see when I'm at my desk by following this account. You know, that's the, that's the account address. Um, this is my actual actual work surface, and then this is the surface that I'm sitting at right right in front of me. Um, there's my window stop that I, I was describing, and um, uh, my first year PhD report there with the the, the black binding. Um, I I utilize a Pomodoro technique. That's why the timer's there. My computer, things related to this DOA course. And then objects that I'm that I, I'm going to photograph, like these vegetables, this tag from a pineapple, this water bottle that um, was actually from a trip, recent trip to Venice, where I got to go see the architectural Venice Biennale, um, a flyer from Hebden Bridge visiting Simon and uh, Brett and Ksenia, um, other PhD colleagues, and then my notebook. Um, and so that photo is very similar to photos that I've been taking and which forms kind of what my PhD research is, is uh, focuses on. And as I was moving, living in London, I started taking photographs of all of my things 
um, as an inventory of, of where things were located. Um, and th this is an example of that, um, a favorite one of mine. Um, and then these are all the objects that were um, above my kitchen sink. Um, a, there was an Ikea kind of open metal shelf with, with uh, rails. And, uh, and so this system of hooks um, would, would hang these objects and these clips would, would, would hang the gloves there. Um, and so uh, this was one of many trying to basically do a kind of archive and inventory of where everything was located in this flat. Um, and then that comes on to, to the title of my essay, Encounters of Entanglement and Care with My Personal Possessions. And um, again, at the University of Manchester. And then I'm supervised by Stephen Walker and Ray Lucas, um, who are, are, are both with the MSA. Um, so the questions I'd like to explore today you know, how might looking at the objects on one's desk constitute proper research? So this is kind of what we're talking about now. Um, and, and maybe you're asking yourself that question yourself. Um, the second question, how does the personal, one's personal experiences, inspirations, daily practices, etc., inform and constitute our research pursuits? And, and this is what this presentation will will hopefully begin to explore and and, and attempt to answer attempt to answer in my own particular way um, through my own own practice and, and and photographs. And then thirdly, how does one actually tell this story as part of a research endeavor um, as a, as as PhD as PhD work and why is that important? Um, and then this is a, a, a larger question that. That um, that I've been thinking about that I um, that currently is 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 kind of uh, um, important to me now at the moment. Um, so to say more about George George Perec's, um essay, um, he concludes with this statement: Thus, a certain history of my tastes, their permanence, their evolution, their phases will come to be inscribed in this project. More precisely, it will be, once again, a way of marking out my space, a somewhat oblique approach to my daily practice, a way of talking about my work, about my history and my preoccupations, an attempt to grasp something per pertaining to my experience, not at the level of its remote reflections, but at the very point where it emerges. And I very much like that at the point, at the very point where it emerges, you know, within within the, the things that we touch within the, the when, within the objects that we utilize within the mat, the materiality of of our, of our practices um, this is another essay and he is it's probably the closest thing to do where he actually describes um, his method to question the habitual but that's just it we're habituated to it we don't question it it doesn't question us it doesn't seem to pose a problem. We live without thinking as if it carried within neither questions nor answers, as if it weren't the bearer of any information. This is no longer even conditioning, it's anesthesia. We sleep through our lives in dreamless sleep, but where's our life? Where's our body? Where's our space? How are we to speak of these common things? How to track them down, rather flush them out, wrest them from the dross in which they remain mired? How to give them meaning, a tongue to let them finally speak of what is, of what we are. What we need to question is bricks, concrete, glass, our table manners, our utensils, our tools, the way we spend our time, our rhythms, to question that which seems to have ceased forever to astonish us. We live true, we breathe true, we, we walk, we open doors, we go down stair course, we sit at a table in order to eat, we lie down on a bed in order to sleep, how, where, when, why. Describe your, your street, describe another street, compare. Make an inventory of your pockets, of your bag. Ask yourself about the provenance, the use of what will become of each. Question your teaspoons, your wallpaper. How many movements does it take to dial a phone number? Why? 
why don't you find cigarettes in grocery stores? Why not? Parekh was a big smoker. Um, and then from another essay, the cafes. How many cafes are there? One, two, three, four. Why did you choose this one? Because you know, you know it because it's in the sun, because it sells cigarettes. The other shops, antique shops, clothes, hi-fi, hi etc. Don't say, don't write, etc. Make an effort to exhaust the subject, even if that seems grotesque or pointless or stupid. You haven't looked at anything. You've merely picked out what you've long ago picked out. You haven't looked at anything. You've merely picked out what you've long ago picked out. And so perhaps that's a kind of, I think of it as, as a kind of point of observation to actually be, to get into the task of seeing, of, of drawing, of photographing, of, of inventory, of listing, um, which begins to sort of get us out of routines where we, we in a sense, um, um, don't see things anymore. Um, or we 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 make assumptions about uh, about things that that we think are there, but we're, but in actual fact may or may not be quite quite the way we think it is. Um, and so all of these essays are are part of are part of this book, um, um, species of spaces. Um, I have that book quite right in front of me, and in species of spaces. Um, which I really recommend. You know, he goes through a series um, starting from the page to the bed, the bedroom, apartment, apartment building, the street, neighborhood, town, countryside, country, Europe, the world and space and kind of progressively works, works outwards. Um, and so from there, I'd actually like to show a, a, a five minute video from uh, Anne Lacatan from Lacatan and Vassal, which kind of extends this this idea. Of how we begin from the, our most intimate spaces. So everyone see that. The video screen. Um, Lacatan and Vassal, a French practice, a, a practice I, I very much admire. Here in Denmark, we know that it's not only the houses and the buildings, but it's the spaces around. So a building is within the context of the space around it. How important is space for you, public space? It's, it's of course uh, important and no building is uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you are always uh, neighbors, the landscape, uh, city, uh, city landscape, and everything around. It's, it's extremely important. But um, to our opinion, um, this public space um, should always start from the interior of uh, the living space, uh, because uh, the public space must be understood as a place of connections. And um, it's important for us at the at finally at the opposite of uh, the principle of uh, starting by a master plan. For us, it's important to start from the, the opposite way. It means starting from the living space, living for yourself, living for for a community, living uh, as a public uh, use. Uh, but uh, to start from uh, this uh, space, which is used uh, as a scale of the people. And, and then to understand uh, which is the next space, which is the next, and then to create a kind of agglomeration of space where uh, it's uh, the question of relations is extremely important. And the public space is part of this system. Um, for us, it's very important to uh, when, when we you, you were talking about this transformation of uh, modernist housing. And for us, it's extremely, it's why we are doing like that, because it's important not to consider it as blocks, but to start from one flat and to start from uh, the improvement of one flat. And we consider that when we have made one flat better, we can, we can sing to uh, the neighborhood of two flats, three flats, and then what's uh, the entrance of the building, and then what's in front of the building, and then what is uh, the relation with the next building. It's for us uh, um, an interesting way of making the city 
which are, uh, again, uh, we think that it's uh, an opposite way of making the master plan because master plan is a very large scale uh, and it comes step by step to the small case, to the small scale. And uh, the architecture is, um, in this uh, situation, the very last fragment of the large scale, while the architecture should be the, 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 the scale of the life. So it's, it's why uh, we are convinced that nowadays the urban planning should be made by both sides um, to, at the same time, simultaneously. The large scale, because the large scale is the scale of the networks, of the, of the big connections, of the great equip equipments, but at the same time the small scale, because it's uh, the scale of the life. And the large scale is also the result of uh, how the small scale is working well. So um, for us, this, uh, this principle of, of from inside out is extremely important. means uh, relation with, with, between people and architecture is really the heart of the relation uh, between people, the space, creating space for use and for relations. It's a sense of architecture. So, uh, of course, it is at the, the heart of uh, the society. It's why it's, uh, it's important to, to, to think architecture as, uh, as, um, as a service of, uh, of uh, people, of a society, and uh, especially for housing. housing. So that's really a really nice project there where they, where they um, renovate and add to that, that social housing there that you were seeing, beginning to see images. There's actually a, um, a documentary of, of, of one of those projects where, um, where that work was actually executed without removing the residents. And so the documentary um, um, shows the, this addition, this work being going on outside of these flats um, from the point of view of, of, of the residents. Uh, really nice. Um, so it's worth, worth checking out. Um, Okay, I've returned to the slides. So um, if you can't see the slides, please let me know. Um, um, so, we, you know, in our Studio A uh, unit, Live With Landscape, we've, we've, we've kind of been take, trying to take this on board. And we, um, we've done home ethnographies um, as, by, as way of introductions and also just as a way of beginning to think about our practices and about how we conduct this work and how, how we uh, engage with the course. Um, then we also uh, divided into, into three different groups and, and each of the groups wrote an observations script for our site, um, which um, the entire team uh, undertook. So that's one of the scripts. Um, there's a second script, and then a third script, and then this was the the, the results that which, which were uploaded to a, a Miro board. Um, and then the last thing to just say about this this idea of observation, maybe a, a more the theoretical one. Um, Bruno Latour in, in Down to Earth, um, a book that where he is kind of uh, is different from his other books and that, you know, it's kind of written for us as concerned readers and it's not academic. It's not written for sociologists or, or, or other academic uh, theorists, um, but for us as concerned citizens about globalization and, and um, climate change. 
where he says it's a question of attachment of lifestyle that's being pulled out from under us a question of land of property giving way beneath us to resist this loss of a common orientation we shall have to come down to earth we shall have to land somewhere so we will sh- so we shall have to learn how to get our bearings how to orient ourselves and to do this we need something like a map of the positions imposed by the new landscape within which not only the effects of public life but also its stakes are being redefined so how do we get our bearings in a world that has become increasingly unmoored and incoherent. Latour advocates for taking stock, interrogating our situation, counting, describing, listening, to not strive for ever more production and unbridled use of resources, but to engender ourselves as beings among other beings, human and non-human, connected together to the earth as terrestrials, with these words engendering and terrestrials, very much Latour's terms, Thus, we cultivate attachments for the task of recognizing and reorienting ourselves with an understanding of mutual dependency. Um, And so this idea of attachment, I I think, is very, very central to my uh, practice and research, how we attach to to, um, not only others, but but to our things and to our objects. So the research, as I've mentioned, centers on on a series of photographs um, taken while moving out from London. And I've talked about this one to the left. And I think about the research as really being told in in um, in two phases or I've, I've begun to divide it into two phases. You know, this this packing um, uh, mad packing activities that occurred over uh, three and a half months um, uh, at the beginning or at the beginning of 2018, and then my f- finally moving f- moving to Manchester, where I begin to unpack, and the project, in a sense, uh, continues. Um, you know, this object to the right was 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 taken recently, um, again here in Manchester on the same round white table that that you see over there to the left. It's a makeshift tag that I'd made to organize my moving boxes for this move to Manchester. The moving box in this case is a medium sized white plastic storage container, also from Ikea. The tag has fallen off. Um, I took two two photos of it, the front and then then the back side. And then I began uh, an Instagram account, you know, where I began to kind of upload a few of these, a few of these photos. Um, and in a sense, it's kind of like, um, as I take them, um, to a degree. Um, so London, November to February, 2017 to 18. Um, this was an initial photo. As I began to remove things from this London flat where I'd lived for nearly 10 years with my now ex-partner, Jen, longer than anywhere I'd lived consecutively ever before. When I took this first image, perhaps I thought that by photographing these things, this might be a way to release the physical object, particularly for items like these, empty plastic bottles and soap dishes, which had been awaiting use or didn't function. These items sat in the corridor on a high bookshelf outside the bathroom door. One item in particular had caught my attention, the glass bottle with the X on it a bottle of apple cider vinegar. Written in marker on the outside of the bottle in all capital letters, non-food, exclamation mark. This was a concoction Jen had made to condition her scalp with a bit remaining. It had been a a couple of years since last used, but the scent of sleeping with someone with vinegar in their hair is still very much with me. This photo led to others, such as this one, which is everything below the kitchen sink. And this one, currently everything in the fridge at the time. And this one from the kitchen catch-all drawer, which was uh, completely rammed to capacity. 
And then this photo, uh, which is objects uh, from the catch-all drawer that that lived in a kind of spare lids container. You know, the container is there to the lower left. You can see it there to the left uh, on the table. And then more individual objects, an eraser collection, so to speak. Twist ties in their container. Scouring pads in container and so on. Thousands of these photos and at the time, um, these hadn't yet become a PhD project. In my mind, the objects are not only to be considered collectively, but individually as well. A family photo where every item dons its Sunday best, is cleaned and shined, turns to its best side, arranged to see each and every face. Where each moment, in a sense, narrates its own story, thus a grid or catalog of memories and entanglements with that moment of encounter between this object and myself being entirely uncontrollable and unpredictable. It's as though memory might reside not here, kind of within me, but there within the object. Take away the object and you might be taking away a memory or an experience of a person forever. This impulse to document an archive is not without precedence. As part of an art collective with my ex-partner, Jen, entitled Compulsive Holding, we undertook a number of art investigations. These projects sought for ways to give visibility and or reappropriation to things one might not naturally see. 30 Days of Design, our first project, was based on our recyclable food containers gathered over a month's time. How to choose a toothbrush was an attempt to negotiate the toothbrush selection at the local Boots Pharmacy. The egg expansion project was, in, was of alternating modifications between myself and Jen of discarded rubbish and packaging material. Voss Street Garden was a 365 day photographic record of the same area of concrete paving outside our flat. A question emerged for me. How do you represent physical sensations and experiences, emotions and memories in the multitude of one's engagements with one's things? How might one talk about one's favorite coffee mugs? I, I began to write about individual objects, how it feels in the hand, its handle, its weight, the rim to the lips, the impossibility of starting one's day without this. Then through my door stops, how all, all the doors in the flat had closers and how these rubber closers replaced hard wooden closers that were really hard to properly engage. Foot, closer, door, floor. And, and how these were used primarily in the summer when the doors were all kept open for airflow and not during the winter when we would gather primarily in one space or another. And how when I had cleared everything away from the flat to see these door stops still remaining. They're still here in Manchester, of course, with me, but not in use as my doors here here in the in the flat um, aren't on closers. You can kind of see, you know, in this in this passage, um, the influence of Perak here, I think. These narratives were expanded using this narrative image couplet where a more complete picture of the north wall of my kitchen is described through the objects that inhabited this area. This became a poster that I submitted to an end of year conference in the first year of my PhD. You can see the questions of attachments was with me there. How is just one to live with one's objects? What is the nature of our attachments with our objects? I'm reading kind of from the poster there. So Manchester, March 2017 to now. My overall aim of photographing all of the things within this London flat was far from complete. I needed to leave the flat in London and to be in Manchester in this brief three month period of time just wasn't enough. My intentions are still to complete this photo inventory even now. In order to do this, while I was packing in London, first I had to create a complete set of informal logistics. Loose items sitting on open shelves or other surfaces were photographed first. Clothing was photographed on the bed as I removed it from drawers. Other objects were grouped and packed to retain specific locations in the flat or in specific drawers. 
Entire boxes or containers and chests of drawers and contents were transported wholesale. Everything except for furniture was numbered and grouped by location in the flat, kitchen, bedroom, office, etc., and annotated with an overview of its contents. Photos were undertaken to document contents of drawers before they were emptied, and contents of boxes were photographed incrementally as the objects were added. I did this up to a point, however, and there were a lot of last minute compromises as literally the moving trucks approached. Sometime during this time, the idea occurred to me to make this the focus of my PhD. The resumption of the project and these uh, activities occurred gradually. My immediate concerns were trying to successfully complete the first year of my PhD. It took me many months just to get to the point where I could set up my white table again to, to be able to photograph again in the flat. Even now, many boxes continue to remain unpacked, awaiting a time to be photographed and accounted for. Because the inventory project was not yet complete, an additional requirement was added to the projects to monitor and record all objects that came into the flat, also by photograph, as well as any objects, not many it seems, that happened to leave the flat. The amb ambition became not to collect more objects, but only to monitor what was added or subtracted and continue this endeavor to holistically understand this collection and its changes. Typically, this has meant objects purchased, such as books or items of clothing and primarily anything delivered or occasionally things given to me. This inventory began to include packaging, boxes, bubble wraps, tissues, etc., in its entirety as accessories to an object acquisition. Consumable items such as food, have been generally excluded from this. However, anything that arrives as a parcel or enclosed in a box, no matter the contents, is typically photographed. Uh, this series begins to show um, the procedure for how I photograph something that comes through the door, so to speak. So these were, you know, it's like the, the package opened, the objects taken out and placed beside the package. Um, that's the, the the kind of receipt statement, the reverse side of the receipt statement. The front of the book, I, I typically will, will photograph a book, the front, the back, a bookmark that was that came with the book, the back sides. Thus, an even further dimension has emerged to this photography practice where individual objects and counters are captured where an object grabs my attention and I think to myself that this is nice or interesting or the objects might represent an event that has taken place or I think this aesthetically would be worth a photograph. At the beginning of 2020, I began to present new photographs taken in an Instagram account, as I've mentioned, entitled At Compulsive Holding. These are a few photos only and far from the entirety of the photographs that I'm taking in the account, selected to a significant degree for their aesthetic value. This has provided a more visible public outlet for the work where I begin to think about the photograph's presentation and its reception. Additional parameters for the photos result as a function of the platform, details of framing, questions of description or lack thereof, commitment, pressures towards maintaining some schedule of uploads, and within this activity, I begin to speak to, to someone, an audience of primarily friends, colleagues, and acquaintances. These practices remain ongoing with no visible end, end point in sight, where activities of photography have, have very much merged with everyday life or, in, or entail negotiations, particularly in those practices where objects are consumed, acquired, and used. Unfortunately, however, the photography is unable to keep up with all of these objects and the frequency of the moment encounters that I'd like to, to capture. As a result, I've begun to set aside objects that await to be photographed alongside my photography table or other adjacent locations in my workspace where they proceed in many instances to sit for months. There is a certain set of futility, madness even, here in my attempts to monitor, control, maintain all the objects I own. I can't possibly photograph all of my object encounters, can I? 
Nonetheless, a continued commitment remains to maintain the project and keep it going with an increased sense of purpose and clarity of aims. Um, so all these, this series of photos is kind of taken in a particular period of time um, in February of 2021. And, um, you know, I went through a period of time during lockdown where um, I, I was breaking a lot of glasses for some reason. And so this this is just a kind of record of of these glasses that I broke within a, a month or two uh, overall period of time. Hate to interrupt David, but we've got about uh, five minutes left. Okay. Uh, it'd be nice to leave some time for questions. Um, I don't know if you're reaching a conclusion just now, but I'll just make you aware of the time. OK. So this research investigation begins with these initial photos in November 2017 and is presented as an autoethnographic auto retelling of this ongoing photography practice and development. While some form of photography has been continually undertaken, its particular activities and sensitivities of attachment to my possessions have not remained fixed. This narrative seeks to discern and examine these shifting attachments that emerged through an extended examination of my object engagements and photography practice. And so in a sense, this is a kind of summary of just what I'm trying to do. And, and th this is a pretty recent actual, um, this focus on, 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 on practice and method and how the practice and method really emerges from, from my own everyday experiences and my own everyday and, and how to begin to tell that um, as eth autoethnography, a, a, as a, a kind of story of self, analysis of self. Um, this account is described in two primary empirical chapters. Um, these two chapters attempt to track this movement as described earlier from a singular deeply personal archive focus occurring in London to a more integrated form of artistic practice that combines my research activities and research with an altered daily life, describing the current situation in Manchester. Even now, the recollections of the first phase are just that, recollections that now have multiple years of distance and other object experiences mixed into this. The narrative voice seeks to acknowledge this distance and to locate itself as much as possible in the present and to convey this sense of looking back with the use of my archive of photographs as markers and memories of these times past. My aim is to capture this sense of a continually moving set of object experiences and re-experiences of memories layered over new experiences and ongoing correlation of photographs that marks and coalesces with these experiences. So I will stop there and I had a few slides on just a kind of framework of of just what I was telling you, as well as um, theoretical concerns. Um, but let's just stop there and then maybe uh, open it up for questions. Hi, David. Simon. Thanks for that. It's, uh, it's nice to see the progress, um, how it's been moving over the last couple of years. Um, more observations, I think, than questions and maybe links and things to think about. Um, I'm kind of curious, especially with the way that you document these objects. And I think there's something there in the ways of assembling and um, how you actually consider um, the process by which you kind of choose and decide 
what objects go together. That kind of curation within the photographs, I think, is quite interesting. Uh, and I think there's something there. You know, I'm reminded when I see that those photos of, I think, one of Latour's essays on thing politics, the politics of things, and how I think for him, assemblages are kind of a really important way of reinterpreting and re-understanding um, objects through, you know, sometimes if you take the house, for example, as a more technical object in itself, and uh, when you start to assemble the objects within, you start to understand on a kind of exploded view, uh, the various complexities within. So I think there's some kind of interesting potential analysis there. And then on the flip side of it is, I suppose there's a process of purification involved in your documentation, uh, almost kind of artistic. Um, so this is just one observation. Uh, and then as well, I liked that you sort of mentioned within your reflexivity that there's an increased sense of purpose in your work. And I think I'm reminded of a William James essay, a pragmatist philosopher who discusses uh, truth and um, I suppose how things become true. And I see in your work and this idea of, you know, purpose increasing, it's through these practices, he says, that kind of ideas of truth become concrete. Um, I could even find a small part in his essays on truth. You know, this idea, which I think you touched on a little bit there, is that kind of for truth to become real, it requires uh, kind of modes of action and practice. So I think there's something interesting in that. And then as well, this link to the public space, uh, this architecture, and perhaps for all our students as well, uh, the Jane Jacobs essay, which I've been, a uh, book which I've been kind of uh, reading up on, um, on chapter four, I think this, like this, um, this architect that you mentioned here, and then within your work, there's some, there's a really interesting connection for me between the kind of internal private space and even a person's internal world and then how that unfolds into kind of public space. And then I suppose what Jane Jacobs is getting at within her kind of critique of um, public spaces is how maybe down the same line of as this idea of uh, William James's truth that kind of public planning and this top down approach kind of reduces and almost neutralizes ideas about how things actually already unfold. So she draws upon children in the street to um, discuss, uh, you know, how children kind of play in certain areas based on, for example, where are the bullies? Where are the dangers? Where are the parents? So there's almost kind of, I think, this link between public ownership, if you like, of a street through, she says, through this kind of understanding of how things actually work and how things are already happening. Uh, I don't know if I'm necessarily explaining that very clearly, but I think there's this interesting link between you kind of studying your day to day process and the objects you encounter and then understanding kind of how cities kind of click in a way and how they work through you know the things that are already happening uh, the kind of you know activities that are already going on um, and then for them you know on the street level there's this interesting aspect which it's uh, I think she draws on basically it takes a whole village to raise a child so this interesting kind of link I think between uh, one's kind of personal life and private life and then what's happening on the street that's just a, a kind of tentative link I'm trying to understand but um, yeah thanks for uh, the talk I think there's lots of other questions coming through as well yeah I mean just to quickly say you, you're I mean you're absolutely right in terms of that I mean it, it's important that in a sense almost like occasionally there'll be an object that depends on another object or um, some leaves that have fallen that I kind of pick up and I put in, I grab a container and I put the, the leaves into that container, not necessarily compositionally, but just to gather it. But then I, I want to photograph them together in a sense because they kind of, they've almost like in a sense met and become buddies um, um, or they've created a network. And so, and so that kind of, but it's, it, these are like rules that I've kind of created within within the practice of, of how I photograph things. And so 
And so, you know, um, really nice what um, Simon, what you were the William James quote, and I'd like I'd like to get that from you actually. Um, and then this notion of truth, and it's like it's not a it's not a it's not a truth that exists somewhere in the sky. It's a truth actually that has just kind of been created a system of ethics that have just that's just emerged through my own practice. And so so because I, because I I've, I've created these protocols, that's the kind of truth. And so it's a, a kind of practice truth of of rules that um that have emerged and 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 that i begin to follow and so the clarity of those rules it's much clearer to me now that i've been doing this over over a number of years um the 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 other thing i want to just add you know as you were describing the jane jacobs another um perec book uh an, an attempt to exhaust a place in um in paris he he basically over a weekend's time sat in a cafe or or a number of cafes outside a, a plaza in Paris, I think near Saint Sulpice, and basically just wrote observations that he saw, you know, and so like um over three days and a lot of buses, um, people walking by what they're carrying, pigeons, so on and so forth. And um and and just a kind of an experience of the of the way things move and the flows and then also you get an experience of him in the process of the observation and it, and you can kind of tell he's 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 sort of excited at first but then he gets tired towards the end and a little bit more uh cursory um uh yeah i would be you know i'd love to hear more more thoughts about that um and so David Chandler, I, I heard psychogeography, flaneur. Um, yeah, absolutely. Psychogeography, yeah. Tons, you got tons from me. I've offloaded onto you. <laughs> great, great. Could I direct, right, so. David, sorry, David, could I direct you quickly to Rosanna's question? Yeah. But psychogeography does resonate with me um, or just kind of. It is, it is psycho. Um, Roseanne's question. Should I read it out? It was, um, I just yeah, said, uh, you mentioned that you can't record every single object encounter that you have. Um, so what makes you choose the ones that you do um, photograph? Um, uh, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I, I just, it's just, it's almost like I, be, it, it becomes such a habit that, you know, I just, in dealing with something, something unusual or a piece of packaging or something, it's just like, oh, that's interesting. That would make a nice photo. Or, or sometimes it's, it's like an event, you know, maybe I, 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 I take, you know, maybe I go to a pub and, you know, I gather a coaster. Okay, well. That's an event and I want to photograph it. But most of the time it's just it's just dealing with things. And I just think, oh, that's nice. Yeah, that would that that would make a nice photograph. Or um, but oftentimes it's connected to a memory. I don't know. Does that begin to 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 answer that answer your question, Roseanne? Rosanna? Yeah, so are you basically saying so the things that you photograph are kind of related to yeah, like an event rather than sort of more abstractly just seeing something and being like oh that's nice yeah but i would also say that the events are our practices are you know me chopping up onions and you know in the kitchen yeah. or, or unpackaging something or um yes yeah, so it can be very simple yeah yeah or or an event you know like like maybe i might cut myself you know and so or you know when when i had you know, I had COVID very early on, and so I took I, I took photographs of all of the ibuprofen and paracetamol that I was taking during that time. So I have a, you know, so that was a kind of event. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for the question. Uh, there's another question coming now from um, Tao as well. If you've got time to quickly address that. You show how, you show many of your objects. So how do you get the connection to other people's objects? What do you mean by that? Other, how, what kind of connection? 
Uh, yeah, uh -huh. just like uh, you show uh, your many uh, personal objects, like those personal objects may be linked to your previous uh, story or that. I, I, I saw that this is uh, maybe a, a system based on your personal life, like uh, there are many uh, different people, uh, different objects like um, I have uh, showed the, the uh, uh, color of the pencil and I have many other uh, like objects. So how can I uh, have connection with you by those uh, different objects? So like uh, uh, the, the studio, my, my teacher Jordan showed uh, different uh, system. Uh, we researched many different systems like uh, uh, community system, ecological system, and uh, uh, economic system. So how those systems uh, can build uh, connection between between those. So like also like you showed so many uh, different uh, objects by uh, uh, different uh, uh, by different time like uh, follow the timeline. So I just thought uh, like can can you uh, uh, can get to, to connection like uh, today your your uh, record one object have connection to you, or like my uh, other teacher Sam, uh, his object maybe is yesterday he he record like just like this. I I, I don't know. I showed uh, really or not. Uh, or, or like a, a a simple example. Uh, different people maybe have different interests. But some of interest is the same, and those interests based on some of the objects. So those objects can can build the, the con, uh, connection uh, to, to uh, between uh, those two people. Also, also uh, for example, like uh, some of plaza. Uh, in, in the in the city, we have many different uh, uh, plaza. So how to build connection uh, to different plants or different objects, and just for some, like some some product or some one product can maybe have many uh, different elements, like uh, different people, uh, different building around those products, different trees, different facilities. So how 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 those how this one product, as you say, maybe it's one object to have connection with. Uh, uh, on another part or or different persons about that. Okay, let, let me let me just let, let, I'll try to maybe just respond to to I don't I don't not sure if it'll answer the answer your question or not. But but um I've caught I brought back the slides again. You know and and you, you had submitted um this this nice image of of uh, colored pencils. And so at one level, in terms of just people and their objects, I, you know, I just I have a kind of fundamental interest in in con other others, your connection, let's say, with your pencils, you know, and so I you know, it's a kind of curiosity and a and a and it's almost like it's a kind of way of I am able to kind of, you know, to. And we don't have time, but if I could, if I maybe the next time I see see you, you could tell me about these colored pencils, and and so it, it it's like a a way of kind of getting to know you, um. But but I also think you were you were also beginning to talk about maybe particular objects that are, maybe it's like a um I think of like a plaza or maybe a statue or something that people begin to have encounters with um that are shared over the same object um you know maybe it's a statue of somebody with, um in um or or a fountain or something like that and so so there's a kind of gathering of of histories and experiences with these objects it's, it's kind of one immediate thought or reaction um Thanks so much, David, um, for a really, really interesting talk. We will have to bring it to a close now, I'm afraid, even though the discussion is really great um, because we've been joined by um, Tarek, our um, guest speaker for the next lecture today. 
Um, so thanks so much, David. And of course, I will add a recording of that lecture for anybody that wants to revisit it. Does the, uh, does the chat comments, do they stay within the, do I, how do I save them?